Hello, and welcome. The YMCA of San Francisco's Youth Classes for All. My name is Risha, and I'm so glad you're here. Today, we are gonna be having a little bit of tea time. Mmm. If you would like to watch and join along in this activity, what you'll need is some tea from the cabinet in your kitchen, some paint brushes, something to drink out of, maybe some markers or other art supplies, and something to write on. As we go through this activity together, you might think of other things that will make this an even better experience, in which case, bring them along. Are you ready to find out how nature is everywhere? Let's go. One of the reasons that I love nature is because of how it makes me feel. I love to go outside and explore. And I'm learning how being inside is a way to explore as well. In your kitchen, there is nature. You might have a tea box that looks kind of like this one. You can see on it, it says ginger. I noticed in my kitchen, there was also ginger powder. And in the refrigerator, I noticed there was also a ginger root. Have you seen one of these things before? Did you know that ginger comes from the ginger plant? The ginger that we recognize most often in this part of the world is the root of the entire ginger plant. If we look at the ingredients of our tea, it can tell us more about what's inside. Sometimes there's even a picture on the front giving us a clue. In this picture, there's a little illustration of the flowering part of the ginger plant. <gasps> Amazing, we've already talked about two parts of the plant that remind us nature is everywhere. We talked about the root and we talked about the flower. When you find out what plant part you have, you can start drawing it. Or maybe this is a time for you to observe and notice and draw what's right in front of you. If you don't know what part of the plant that your tea comes from, we can do a little investigation. So we notice the root R-O-O-T. The root of the plant grows underneath the surface of the soil. It grows in the dark. We also talked about the flower. F-L-O-W-E-R, flower. The flower grows above ground. But there are so many parts in between. Can you think of any other plant parts that you know? Now that we've thought about what the plant looks like before it gets to our home, we might even take a special moment to say thank you in our hearts to the very industrious, hardworking people that got these plant parts from its origin all the way to us. There were people involved in the growing, the harvesting, the transportation, the selling, and then maybe even someone in your home brought it into the house. Is there something in your home that's grown even closer? Mm. Let's take a moment to look closer at the things we have here. 
can make some observations. What do you notice? What do you notice about the color, the size, the shape, the texture? We can use our five senses. Our sense of sight, our sense of hearing, our sense of smell, wow, our sense of touch, our sense of taste, Ooh. We might even decide to make an illustration about what we see here. You can add some detail. Hmm. You might even label it. I notice there are some lines on this ginger. I notice that there's some papery skin. I notice that it has a sweet, sharp smell. Mm. If you're feeling like you don't know what to do next, you can always come back to our five senses. Our sense of sight, our sense of hearing, our sense of taste, our sense of smell, our sense of touch. Amazing. Wow, there's so much to notice when we start to realize that nature is everywhere. Let's say what you have at home is some tea. Here's how you can make some observations like this. Let's take out one of these tea bags. What do you notice? Does it look familiar? What do you wonder? What does it remind you of? Hmm. I see a little white papery pouch that's somewhat translucent. I see that there's some dried material inside that's moving when I turn it. I see, hmm, I feel there's some powdery um, texture on it. I hear the dry materials moving inside. I smell the powerful smell of the tea inside. wonder what it tastes like. Woo! It's a little sweet and strong. I wonder how that taste would change if I put some water on it. Have you ever looked inside? Let's find out. You could use a pair of scissors or you can just rip it open. I'm going to do it over this area with a white piece of paper so that it's a little easier to see. 
In your home, you might choose to use a plate so that your scientific investigation stays contained in a place where you can keep making good observations. Remember, good observations use your five senses. Okay, let's open it up. I'm noticing the sound of the paper tearing. It's very quiet. I'm noticing the color of what's coming out of this dry tea bag. It's kind of golden brown. What's the color of the contents of your tea bag? I'm noticing it doesn't smell as strong as when it was inside of this tea bag. I wonder if the paper from this tea bag absorbed some of the smell. Now is when we get to use some scientific materials. If you have a spoon, you can use one of those too. I have these dry paint brushes. This is also a nice way to relax. Ah, if you're feeling stressed out from a day of classes or helping your family, or just being confused, missing nature, this is a nice way to come back to your body, to notice yourself and give yourself permission to pay close attention. Let's use these paintbrushes to make a little art in this tea. We might decide to draw a design or write a message or just enjoy this opportunity to pay close attention to something that's new and interesting. A reminder that nature is everywhere. As you move the contents of your tea bag, you might look closely and see more evidence that tells you about the plant parts inside. For example, I'm actually seeing some plant parts that look like dried petals, maybe from the flowering part of a plant. I'm noticing some of the material inside of this tea bag is more rectangular. I'm noticing some of it is round and granular. Mm. Oh, this is a great time to make some observations. O for observation, O for observation. Ooh, ooh, let's pay close attention. So, there's some granular bits inside of this tea bag. There's some more rectangular parts. They look kind of flat. It reminds me a little bit of a blade of grass. So maybe it's from the stem of the plant. S-T-E-M, stem, stem. The stem of the plant grows above the soil and connects the roots to the rest of the plant. A very important part indeed. Hmm. So I'm noticing some flat parts. I'm noticing some round parts. Oh my goodness, we're observing so many things. This is great, I'm having fun with you. Now that we've had this opportunity to explore and observe, you might decide to do a little art. In this cup is a little bit of water. I'm gonna use this water to paint with the tea. We're gonna find out what happens. What do you think will happen? Hmm. 
this is a really good time to remember that playing with the things that we discover is an excellent way to practice being a scientist. Hmm. This flat brush is really picking up the granules very easily. I'm going to try it with this smaller tapered brush and see what happens. Do you think it will work as well? Why or why not? Asking these questions is a great way to practice our science. How's your painting tea happening at home? Is it going the way you thought it would? Is it a similar color to the tea that I'm using? Is it a similar texture? Ooh. <gasps> you know what? I might even use the tea to color in ginger. Might be fun to see how the marker is changed by the tea as well. This could add some depth to your nature journaling. Wow. It smells wonderful. It smells like gingerbread. I wonder if I could use this to make gingerbread. Ginger tea, gingerbread. Wow. There's so many ways to play and explore, even from within our home. <gasps> Finally, if you're feeling very exploratory, you could even use the paper tea bag as a paintbrush. What do you think will happen? getting it wet first. Wow, look at that. So much fun. Oh, it's very crumbly. Some of it is still stuck to it. I'm really curious to know how it's going for you. What does it smell like? What does it feel like? Hmm. I don't think I'm going to taste it at this point because I've been dipping a lot of things in it that I shouldn't put in my mouth. But you can use your other senses. We're going to look, we're going to listen. We're going to smell. We're going to touch. And then maybe you can enjoy a cup of tea as well to taste some more exploratory aspects of what you're observing. Well, fabulous friends, thank you so much for joining me during Nature Is Everywhere. Again, my name is Risha. During this time, we started talking about the plant parts that some of our food comes from, from inside our very own home we started talking about the five senses that we use to make observations and pay close attention and practice our scientific method. We also made some illustrations and practiced nature journaling, adding detail and labeling some of the things we notice. And we tried something new with a little bit of art. We did so many things. Remember, nature is everywhere. And if you want to find out more about other classes that we have, you can join us for more by visiting at www.ymcasf.org. Thank you so much. Have a great day.
Did you know that YMCA of San Francisco never closed? When shelter in place happened, we could no longer provide in-person programming. We quickly shifted to provide youth and family programming virtually. As early as April, we started providing on-demand activities in our YMCA of San Francisco YouTube channel. For this video, we're going to be making a geodesic dome. Today, we're going to be making a hovercraft. The science around this activity is really awesome. In addition, we have a regular schedule of activities for our youth and families to join live. We feature read-alouds, yoga, family Zumba, arts and crafts, drawing clubs, and more. So don't miss out on our virtual youth and family offerings. Visit www.ymcasf.org for more info and class schedules.